Suzanne, night manager, a spy thriller. That's one of the toughest genres to pull off. Why, why, why take on such a tough project? I love spies. I maybe, maybe I thought I wanted to be a spy when I was a kid. <laughs> and this is a way of being it by proxy. But, um, but basically, it's a, for a director, it's an incredibly interesting thing to do because I think all, I, I mean, there are similarities between actors and spies. And, you know, they are someone else and they appear to be. And um, playing around with that is just um, very, very interesting. And I've always been crazy about John de Carre. Getting Tom Hiddleston in the, in the lead role was crucial because you need somebody that can get, have many masks, play many different characters within one character. Uh, what, what about him intrigued you? Well, he has that weird things in his eyes where you kind of look into them and, 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 and you, you are very, you're drawn into him and you are very attracted by him and you aren't quite sure who he is. And in his very, in, and that is sort of Tom Hiddleston, that is a sort of profoundly enigmatic uh, thing to his, uh, to his being. And I think that's why he's a perfect spy. And on the other end, you've got Hugh Laurie, the perfect villain. Um, <laughs> we've seen him, you know, play Dr. House for so long, and then he used to have a comedy career. Why was he that, that perfect person to play this villain? Well, the thing about Richard Rober, the character he plays, is that he's the worst man in the world. He is also the most charming man in the world. And, and Hugh is certainly the most charming man in the world. And I think to, and he has a kind of elegance to him and a certain sort of, and, and even his sense of humor makes sort of, you almost don't believe that he can be as evil as you get to realize he is. And I think, and you want to be seduced by him. And I think that sort of combination is just um, very irresistible. Um, doing a six hour project like this, and especially being in the spy genre, you, you, you get to visit so many different locales. What's the difficult part of that though, from a directing standpoint? I mean, from a directing point, standpoint is that you don't, you, it's shot like a long film, like a six hour long film. And so you do like a scene three from episode six in the morning and scene 48 from episode three in the afternoon. And it's sort of shot totally like a crazy, crazy schedule. Like you don't shoot out one episode. And, and, and so as a director, it's a little bit like having three chessboard running at the same time. So you want to make sure that all the different red threads eventually falls into pieces. So when it's, when it's then <laughs> cut into six bit, they actually work. On a thriller, you've got to also, you're juggling a lot of balls. You've got to be a great juggler. Um, talk about that process from a storytelling standpoint. Well, you, you have to be a juggler. You have to juggle lots of of different balls. You have a lot of characters, lots of bits of information, and when does which character know which bit of information and understand what? And and for me, it was incredibly thrilling and exciting because it's like, yes, it's challenging, but it's a, a I mean, it keeps you alert for like weeks after week after week. It's a, thoroughly exciting. And, and, and when you shoot it and it's this exciting, you just hope that the excitement then translate onto what you eventually show the audience. Well, I was telling somebody, they asked me what was it like because they knew I'd watched it. And I said, well, it's kind of in the James Bond realm, but without all of that type of action, it's much more uh, in the mind, much more people playing chess with each other. Uh, <laughs> would, would you agree with that? Yeah, I would agree with you. I mean, there is a bit of the other kind of action as well, but I would agree with you about it's sort of, it's very much is a kind of cat and mouse game between the villain and, uh, and the hero or the assassin and the assassinated or whatever you call it. I mean, it, it is a kind of cat and mouse game which makes it slightly different. It's just about to air here in the US, but you already know it did really, really well in the UK in terms of ratings. What was your reaction to that? I mean, it was crazy. I mean, I don't think any of us anticipated it being so, such a huge, huge success. And it's, of course, it's wonderful. And you kind of go, you kind of go, um, you know, um, you get the first reviews and they, and they are positive and you kind of get hopeful. And then you have a kind of thing, oh, I hope second episode, it's gonna not go. And then it just went up and up. It was like a adventure. 
I asked Tom this. Of course, he didn't know. He said, you've, you've completed the book. There's no more story about this night manager character. But would you and maybe him and the producers, could you figure out a way to bring, bring him back? I think you should... I think you should suggest that. <laughs> I mean, I'd love to do it. And uh, I mean, but I'm not really the one who orders hugely expensive television series. So if I were, I would. <laughs> well, thanks so much. It's Thank a great you. project. Thank you.